a new Modular 3 printed flywheel blaster, Southern California's Nerf community prepares for Armageddon, and X-Shot takes off with new blaster designs. I'm Grim. I'm Vile Mods. I'm Master Johnny Chief. And I'm KT of Family Foam Sport. All that and more in episode 31 of the Foam News Collective. Be sure to like and subscribe, and let's get right into the news. It's finally here. Rodian, Flygonial's long-awaited modular flywheeler platform, is now released. You heard that right, modular. With its core modules requiring just seven takedown pins, removing them will allow you to swap your cage setup, pusher mech, or stock, each having a plethora of options. Whether you want a single-stage B-car semi-auto flywheeler or a dual-stage full-auto powerhouse with a buffer tube stock, Protean has you covered. While I can't tell you performance metrics due to the number of possible setups, I can direct you to where to get one. Ligonial has the files for Protean's official release listed under Public Domain on their printables page, with beta files for new features also available. Silver Fox Industries is selling printed parts for 130 United States dollars and build it yourself kits for around 200 United States dollars. And Valor will be selling custom Proteans on their Valpec Armory Instagram and Facebook. Links for more information down in the description. If you're tired of all the bare, boring barrel ends on the market, then never fear, there's more available to spice things up. From Epics over on printables, there's a new Rev2 EXB car in three or four bearing stack flavors, implementing extra inch technology, trademarked. That increases the average velocity to negate the drag from the B car. The new mount is designed to fit tighter to your barrel using tighter tolerances and more relief cuts under the collet and also introduces some color pop with the multi-part design so there's no need for multi-color printing. But if bearings aren't your style or maybe they're just out of your budget, then also on printables is Bacon Creation's new BCD car. Similar to its bearing cousin, the Disc Centering Auto Rotation, or D-Car, Muzzle Device uses number four washers to invoke spin on darts with the added benefit of reducing rotational inertia. According to Bacon Creations, the D-Car only had an 0.8% FPS drop compared to its B-Car counterparts. While these gains are marginal, the lower hardware costs make these options quite enticing. And for the big spenders of this three-course barrel bling buffet is T238's new Daybreak Tracer Unit with Chronograph. Like other RGB offerings from T238, this little unit has multiple color options and modes to customize your tracer flash to your liking using the built-in button panel and screen, as well as making use of the new built-in chronograph to measure the firing rate up to 80 rounds a second and the velocity of your projectiles. At the time of this recording, you could pick one of these new tracer units on sale for 99 USD instead of the MSRP of 160 USD. Links, of course, to all of these will be down in the description. We haven't heard much from X-Shot since they committed the Insanity line to the market, but lately a few new products have begun appearing online via home and farm store Thesen's website. First up, we have the first sub-series of the Insanity line, a three blaster set called Horror Fire, a mix of zombie strike and dinosaur aesthetics along with the Insanity line's interconnections, but without its oversized dart storage. Featuring bright green saw blades and faux bone, the cylinder-fed Doomsday and Reaper X are both pictured individually in their packages. The larger Dreadhammer appears only in the corner of the box, but it looks like it could be a reskin of either the Crusher or possibly a flywheeler like the Ragefire. Hobbyists nostalgic for Nerf's Zombie Strike line have already been comparing the design language of these new blasters very favorably to Nerf's recent zombie blaster attempts. Next up, we have X-Shot's Excel Micro 2.0, a new single shot pocket blaster that looks to be somewhere between the old Micro and a menace in X-Shot's new red color scheme for their Excel line. And finally, resolving a leak from episode 25, we have the X-Shot Blaster Corn, a single shot unicorn corn blaster with flapping wings. With the blaster corn, we get a new color of X-Shot's air pocket darts, amazing graphics, and a lot of attitude. I think this is my favorite one.
It's Armageddon! SoCal's largest NIC Nerf War is back and will be taking place on Sunday, July 14th, 2024 at Adventist Union School in Bellflower, California. With 300 FPS caps, a unique play location, raffles and giveaways, as well as special guests, this is a rare opportunity for players to stretch out their blaster limits with lots of other high power enthusiasts. Current special guests include previous FNC host and YouTuber Beret, Tinkershot of Spitfire Products, former Jet Blasters designer Chris Cartea, as well as members of SoCal-based teams Nebula and Red Tide. Tickets are only $15, and the team is looking at hopefully adding an additional competitive event on Saturday, July 13th. So be sure to check the links down below for more info and updates. And now for Halflings. JSPB and Dr. Flux have teamed up to create Dr. Flux's Shooting Lab, a remix of JSPB's 3D printed master key concept for tabletop experimentation and play, advertised as appropriate for kids. The Shooting Lab includes paper targets, a clever target dummy for use with old dart foam, the blaster with a tripod and multiple firing mechanisms, plus a little tiny Dr. Flux. Misplaced Moose has a new mag in grip Springer pistol design in beta, expected to hit 165 to 230 feet per second. Files for the 31K will be available very soon on the Moose mod shop, and Foamdemic is already offering fully built blasters. Donut Cat has released the Hubris Mag, a talon compatible straight short dart magazine holding 40 plus darts at a time entirely for the memes. Once printed, the mag is over a foot and a half long, powered by a foam blast style drum spring, and according to the creator, works okay. My Community Crosshairs are on Edward Watson's amazing LAS-5 Scythe Continuous Beam Weapon from Helldivers 2. For a game that hasn't been out that long, it's impressive how fast this was built, sporting great weathered paint, as well as details and greebling to match the in-game weapon. This is an excellent prop for any con Edward plans to attend, or spreading democracy for Super Earth with a cup of liberty. For this episode, my crosshair is dialed in on Whatever This Is by Reddit user Night Maneuvers, showing us that Vienna sausages are on the menu for rival ammo. This one got a good chuckle out of me, and I see it as inadvertently a needed reminder that it doesn't always need to be about professionalism nor performance. Sometimes it just should be fun. It should also be noted that this may just be the one time you want your ammo cooked, and always remember to sterilize your mags before chucking blizzies downrange. Boy, I never thought those words would come out of my mouth, but here we are. <laughs> Hello, this is Jonathan, Mr. Chef 117 and my community crosshairs are trained on Rocket Coffin Studios Covenant Carbine build video. Now, you may remember my friend Barry highlighting this blaster a couple episodes ago, but at the time it was just a work in progress. Even though thousands of people watched that video, Rocket Coffin's build log still has less than 500 views at the time of this recording. As soon as the news is over, I need all of you to go over to Rocket Coffin's channel, watch his video, like it, and subscribe. Do it for humanity. Do it for Cortana. Do it for the memory of my game franchise before 343 ruined it. Jimmy John 117 out. And that's it for the news. Huge thanks to all our contributors, Ko-Fi subscribers, and to our Discord moderators. Be sure to check out this week's podcast episode where we'll be talking with Boomstick Mods about the upcoming Maryland Mayhem and the prep work that goes on behind the scenes, as well as discussing new blasters and answering questions from our Ko-Fi supporters. If you'd like to ask our guests questions, then consider checking out the Ko-Fi page to support the channel or swing by our merch shop. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below how you think we're doing. And we'll see you in the next one. The next generation of the Griffin is coming. Oh, that was the last episode script. <laughs> if you'd like to ask... Um, and I'm KT, a family foam sport. I have to go right into the thing. Okay. With its core mod... Ah! Uh, 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 <laughs> All right, you win this time, script. And answering questions from our Ko-Fi support. Oh my God, sus, 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 sus porters. You're all, you're all very sus. It's Mr. Chef time. Let's see the screen astonishingly well through this thing. 
have these little gnats because of my, my house plants and I'm trying to get rid of them. And every now and again, be flying around and I just I get them with a vacuum. <laughs> Take that! You stupid gnats. Sweaty gamer mode over. Can I just can I just express how nice this filament really looks? Look at how pretty that actually is. My god, that just looks amazing. And I've got two more to build. Crap. <laughs> ah! I have these little nets because of my, my house plants, and I'm trying to get rid of them. And every now and again, they are flying around, and I, I get them with the vacuum. He he ha he, he, take that. You stupid nets.